Okay, my name's Helen de Graaf. I work for Sardi Entomology, so that's the South Australian Research and Development Institute. Um, I currently work on a project that's involved in trying to encourage farmers that grow broadacre crops like canola or wheat, trying to encourage them to use insecticides better or less often and um, also to really study what insect pests they have before they go and um, decide how they're going to control it. Um, so we have we run workshops there and trying to um, train farmers and the agronomists and advisors and we also have a long-term trial there um, where we basically trying to compare different treatments on a field and we study the insects in all the different levels so on the ground, in the plant, in the air, at all different levels and with all different sampling techniques and then we take them back to the lab and we try and identify them and sort them all out and then we can come back and tell the farmers what the best way is to manage their pests. Um, okay, well I've always been interested in biology and science and the outside world. Um, I guess one of my things when I was younger I used to enjoy cutting caterpillars open and find out what kind of parasitoids are inside them which is quite fascinating. Gross sometimes but fascinating. Um, and probably uh, my favourite insect is a really tiny one that most people don't even notice. It's called a socid. Belongs to the family called Socoptera and it's also called book lice. Um, it's really tiny but under the microscope they're really cute. Um, I do keep some pet insects at home. I keep some blaps beetles which are um, little, well quite large black beetles. Uh, and I also keep uh, Australian spiny leaf insects. I've got about four generations I've kept as pets now. Um, well, I just think it's, it's, it's a shame that a lot of children, when they're kids, the world of bugs is really exciting and really fun, and yet once they grow up and go through high school, all of a sudden bugs are gross and you don't want to have anything to do with them, when really they, they're still as fascinating as they were when you were younger. Um, and I just think if we can encourage children to believe that there's actually careers that they can follow, focusing on insects even when they're grown up, I think that's a really important step to get kids involved in science and carry that through as they grow up. We work with farmers and agronomists um, and these are farmers um, that grow crops like canola or wheat, um, what we call broadacre crops and um, the project is really trying to encourage farmers to incorporate integrated pest management or IPM as it's often called into their pest control regimes and um, that basically means really um, making sure that it's necessary to spray your insects first if you decide to but really making sure that the insect that you think it is is worth spraying. Sometimes um, you look at an insect and go oh no it's eating my crop but it's actually a beneficial insect which means it's actually eating your pest insects. So we're try really trying to encourage people to understand that and so we run workshops and experiments to prove that it's possible to do that and still get good crops with less pesticide use. Yes. My name's Cathy Stubberfield and I'm from The Scientists. We hail from sunny Echuca um, and we're a small team and we really wanted to um, get science out to young children because we, we felt that it was sort of slipping a little bit and for us science is so exciting and we just needed to get it to the kids. So we do a lot of school, primary school science and that's probably what our biggest our biggest area but we do also do kids birthday parties but because we really wanted them to be doing some really great fun slime and good stuff that kids like to do. Um, we also do a, f a few adult programs which is 
yeah, which we really enjoy as well. And yeah, it's all about getting science out there and making it lots of fun for everybody. This is Twiggy and she's a spiny leaf insect. She's a female spiny leaf insect and these are wonderful pets. Um, they um, look a bit like scorpions so people are a bit freaked out by them but they're fabulous pets. They just eat eucalyptus leaves so they're very easy to look after and, um, and if you actually have a close look at these insects they are just amazing. And she's a female, she, doesn't, she only has tiny little wings so she can't fly. Um, but the male can, the male is able to fly, but she can produce eggs and young without a male, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, so we have lots of little baby girl stick insects, so um, yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Um, today we've got lots of buggy things here for people to see. We've got our water bugs, so lots of water bugs. People can have a look at the water bugs and find out what they are, a bit more about them. Water bugs actually tell you a lot about the quality of the water that you're looking at. So the different sorts of bugs tell you whether it's good quality water or whether it's poor quality water. Um, we've also got some great snail slime. We're making some slime, so that's always fun. And we've got lots of other bits and pieces around, talking about bug mouth parts and why, why different bugs have different mouth parts and a few other bits and pieces and a few life cycle bits and pieces. So we're looking at mealworms life cycles, so how life cycles are different for different animals and, and why. Insects are the most amazing things and um, they're in our backyards. We probably the one animal or the one group of animals we know least about. We don't we don't look at them, we just they're there and we stomp on them and, and then move on. Um, I, I'd just like people to actually have a look at what they might have in their backyard because it's absolutely incredible and the, the most beautiful things that um, that you could ever see.